As you can see on your incredible shirt, today is a really special day for the organization as Fernando Valenzuela's number in Jersey is officially being retired. What does this day, this moment, and what does Fernando mean to you personally? Um, it, it's a big day. Um, I, I think it's uh, certainly long overdue, um, but I know that the fans, uh, Fernando, his family, everyone's been looking forward to this for quite some time. Um, you know, Fernando just... Uh, you know, his uh, effect, his legacy, uh, you know, impact uh, is going to last forever. It has lasted such a long time, uh, not only for, uh, you know, the Dodgers, but all of Major League Baseball. He's been an inspiration for many people. Um, and so just to be able to break barriers and just to be so uh, humble while doing it and so accomplished, uh, I consider him a friend. And I don't think he's going to be too emotional um, with this, um, but it's certainly well-deserved, and I'm looking forward to tonight. We get to be in a pretty special position in which we do get to continue to see him every day as he's in the broadcast booth. What has the impact um, been for just him being around on some of the younger players and even players like Julio Rios to come into this clubhouse and to have him as someone only to look up to but to be a mentor for as well? You know, I, I think, you know, obviously, He's a hero for uh, a lot of Mexican-born players, um, Julio being one. Um, you know, when I played um, here with the Dodgers, he was around more. I think he's just kind of resolved to just being a fan of the players, the organization, and I think he's just so humble that he doesn't want to make it about himself. And so, you know, they could have a lot of one-off conversations, and I don't know, but I think for, for him right now, um, I just think he likes that kind of uh, view from the upper deck, and he'll pop down once in a while. So he's not as comfortable on the field, but he's always welcome, for sure. I mean, naturally, as like a baseball watching public or really Hall of Fame centric, but how important is it to sort of recognize the types of players that maybe have the impact Fernando did? Maybe aren't Hall of Famers, but like obviously you have still really resounding impact on certain fan bases, certain groups. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting. Is um, you know, the Hall of Fame is is uh, constructed for, for the greatest of all time, um, but it's hard to, and you can quantify the stats, but I think that, you know, with what Fernando Mania, Fernando Valenzuela did for the Dodgers, the organization, the fan base, um, that certainly really moved the needle and, and was, has been sustainable. So, um, you know, whether it warrants a Hall of Fame, that's not my decision, obviously. Um, I don't get a vote. Um, but you can't debate uh, his impact on an organization and Major League Baseball entirely um, hasn't been just as impactful um, alongside his statistics than anyone that's uh, in the Hall of Fame now. Skip, is it safe to say the likes of Fernando Valenzuela will never be seen again? Um, I, I think that, um, yeah, I, I just think that it was just so unique. Um, it was sort of the perfect storm with uh, the city of Los Angeles and, and a lot of people that looked like Fernando and um, how he just came out, you know, um, so successful and so impactful. Um, you know, in other sports, there's things, there's players, there's, you know, that, that create buzz, but. That's going to be hard to kind of, kind of hard to parallel what he did, you know, that buzz. What do you remember about uh, Fernando as a player? Um, so Fernando as a player, um, I'm not old enough to have played against him, <laughs> um, but I do remember watching him. Yes. Um, I remember the eyes to the sky. Um, I remember the delivery, the big leg kick, and uh, I remember the screwball. And uh, he had that screwball, and he was a pitcher who could hit. And um, guys just loved him. So um, I just remember he was just very humble and, and very, very good. Dave, where were you in 81 for the idol of Fernando Mitchell? 81, uh, I was on a small island in Hawaii. <laughs> so uh, I wasn't caught up in Fernando Mania at that point in time. Um, I, I didn't really get to Fernando Mania until about 84 when I moved to Southern California. Did you get a chance to talk to Clayton and see how he's going? You know, I, I talked to uh, Tom Zalbert, our, our, our head trainer, and he says that uh, 
Clayton had some normal soreness. Um, he's in good spirits. So um, my thought is uh, we came out of it great. And so uh, now it's kind of trying to figure out, uh, you know, what day he'll start. But it's probably going to be uh, an extra day and we'll get him back in there. And what about J.D.? How's he feeling today? Uh, J.D. feels better. He's going to go through stuff in the cage and um, get moving around. So uh, if that goes well, it's, it's on the field tomorrow. Um, Sunday, my hope is he'll be available um, to play on Sunday. How's Max been doing just with his wrist? I know that we've been seeing him uh, as in the box in situations like that, but not necessarily as much on defense. How is he kind of just reacting defensively? He, he's getting better, um, and that's where it's uh, it hasn't bothered his swing. It's more of uh, just the backhand play. Um, so today I'm just going to give him a day, and he'll be back in there tomorrow and uh, back in there on Sunday as well. When you say an extra day for Kershaw, is that in addition to Monday, Monday's off day? Um, that that uh, includes Monday's off okay, day. So. You guys have been pretty hot of late. Uh, considering how things ended last year in, in ODS, are you concerned that you guys might be peaking too early right now? No. <laughs> no, no. We're playing good baseball. Uh, we're not thinking about the DS from 2022, and we're just focused on playing good baseball. How do you keep it rolling? Play a good baseball game today yeah. and do the same thing tomorrow, regardless of result. That's how we do it. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys.